God bless you. And I'd like to welcome all of you to our program today. I have with me today a distinguished scholar, Dr. Etienne Graves. And he's going to speak to you at this particular time about something that is going to be viewed in a few moments, which will be very provocative and in some senses even stunning. But it is relevant to the direction that we are going in. Praise God, and thank you for having me today. And I want to talk to you about um, what happened with Louise Hubner and these sex spells and how they originate with the orgies and everything. So I want to get to deep detail about it. Um, one of the ways that witches cast spells is engaging their followers in having orgies. Um, that's a way for them to transfer their energies and to keep people under control. Um, hopefully today we can get more into that. I just want to read to you what a definition of an orgy is. Basically, it's a secret ceremonial rite held in honor of an ancient Greek or Roman deity and usually characterized by ecstatic singing and dancing during sexual activities. Um, so that's the whole basis for her spell was sex. Now, the interesting thing that we must understand here is, first of all, what is a witch? A witch is a practitioner of witchcraft who is normally a participant in what is called a coven of witches. And she is a female. And the individual that we are going to view in a few moments who is going to tell us about the manifestations of satanic energy through her black arts describes witchcraft in this manner. She says, witchcraft attempts to deceive, cajole, and otherwise disturb natural inclinations and occurrences. Witches know about the universal energy of which all things are a part. A witch is a psychic female with magical secrets. A, seer, a sheer force of will makes things happen according to the definition of how a witch operates. Mm -hmm. Now, at this time, we're going to show you a brief minute and a half video that will give you the literal words and insight into the individual that we will be speaking about. Please play it at this time. Orgies are ritualistic energy exchanges that provide the concentration of power needed for spell casting. Witches and wizards crave energy, and in fact are very much addicted to it in all forms. And there's a special kind of energy derived from uniting with another. And so spell casters do a tremendous amount of uniting. We know that a mystical bond exists between lovemakers. This bond is able to attract all sorts of good luck and success. An energy exchange celebration that is often as a token to the gods will liberate your soul and expand your consciousness. You will be better able to absorb the raw energy of the cosmos and convert it quickly to your needs after you have participated in a glorious celebration of love. Enchanters need orgies. The orgy will help you generate the electric and magnetic impulses you'll need in order to cast spells. But the best time for an orgy is during the dark of the moon, or when the moon is full and again at the times of the equinoxes. These are periods when the earth is surrounded by wild vibrations, and when if the orgy is successful, you will be able to slip easily into the fifth dimension of fantasy gather what you need and return stronger and ready to create your destiny. That was Louise Hubner, the one we're talking about. I want to give you a little bit of history about her. 
she is a sixth generation witch. So you can go back to the 1800s and her great, 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 great grandmother was a witch and kept passing it down the bloodline. I believe she was ordained to cast the spell she cast in 1968. She was set ahead for that. And she's also performed psychic readings since the age of two years old. She had her own radio show where she would give psychic readings and um, give psychic readings to heads of state and people that have, no, that have notoriety. Um, she believed and taught and encouraged sex orgies for magic and for casting spells. And not only that, what you have to understand here is that she carried satanic DNA. There was a lineage that had been transferred through her. You have to understand that what we're dealing here with is someone who was cursed by the devil and self-deceived and at the same time was operating in the occult at the highest level yes. to the very point that she actually received documentation that gave her authority in the city of Los Angeles. Tell us about that. Yes, well, she had had a, a birthday party for the city of Los Angeles, and it was very successful, and everyone loved it. So when the county supervisor found out about it, he asked her to do the same thing at the Hollywood Bowl for the county of Los Angeles. But she was smart, because she knew what was going on. She said, in order for me to do this, you have to make me the official witch of Los Angeles County with a signed and sealed document. Maybe unbeknownst to them, they did it anyway, and she received that certificate which gave her the authority to not only cast that spell, but to go around the world on tours and giving lectures and casting spells on other people, um, and it led to what happened in the Hollywood Bowl the year later. Now, at the Hollywood Bowl, she cast a spell not only on Los Angeles, but on all of his counties as well. Now there are, are approximately 88 counties in the city of Los Angeles. And this spell has never been broken. It is still, but it has been broken here recently. Glory to God. Through the supernatural and divine intervention of the Holy Spirit. Now, what we're trying to do today is to give you a clearer understanding from the biblical perspective of what the Bible has to say about the subject of witchcraft. One of the things that you'll find is that King Saul, he actually died because he went to a witch and the witch was located in a place called Endor. And he inquired of her through divination in regards to the destiny of his army. And the Bible says that the witch herself became frightened because suddenly Samuel, who was dead, Samuel the prophet, literally came up from the ground and he spoke. And because Saul disobeyed God, that day the kingdom was snatched out of his hand. So the Bible tells us that when we dabble in the occult, that we trespass the divine boundaries that God has strictly set for us because we literally enter into the realm of the kingdom of darkness. One thing you have to understand is that Luis Hubert received a document with a city seal on it which gave her legal authority in the spiritual realm. Even though these city officials may have thought that this was all fun and mirth and levity, the reality was is that they were literally letting in a witch who had the authority generationally to exercise satanic influence in the entire city and counties of L.A. So it's important for us to understand that Satan is a legalist. Yes. And he has to operate within the boundaries of the law of God, even though he would desire not to. And you know what's interesting about that is how do you perceive her actions in regards to this once she received that certificate? Uh, once she got that certificate, she was given the green light to do whatever she could do in the county. It opened so many doors for her. And the specific things that she had the people 
um, use or bring to the spell cast were in order to usher in a certain spirit. Some of the things she had them um, bring in were, or she gave them was chalk, candles, garlic, fake gold pins, fake gold spiders. And this even led to her receiving a, a broom given to her by a, um, a delegate and also given the keys to the city. The keys to the city represents you have authority in that city. And this opened the door for her to do more, not just at the Hollywood Bowl, but around the world where she would travel. You know, it's interesting. First Samuel 15, 23 tells us this. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, yes. and stubbornness is as iniquity and adultery. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected you, thee from being king. And these were the words that Samuel spoke to Saul. Leviticus 19.31 says this, Do not turn to mediums or spiritists. Do not seek them out to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. These are the words of God to the children of Israel. The effects of this sexual spell are disturbing when you really look at the problems that we face with rape, incest, with homosexuality, with the LGBT community, with the redefining of the family, with the problems that exist with individuals who are involved in what is called snuff flicks, where they murder people to derive sexual pleasure. Yes. Individuals are involved in bestiality, and we know that prostitution, it destroys the integrity and the characters of individuals. Just think of the abuse that women suffer who are sold into sexual slavery. And the pornography industry in California is significant. Etienne, briefly make reference to that in regards to the influence of the spell. Well, one of the, thing, one of the things I think about when you mentioned was um, very important is unwanted pregnancies. Think about how many unwanted pregnancies occurred because of the sex spell. And then that led to what? Abortions. That's another major thing. That goes back to the Bible when they would sacrifice their children to Malik. That's another form of that. But so many other doors were opened. I mean, even this California is the, the porn industry of the world. And at that time, it was just starting to spread. You even know about the whole hippie love thing that started out after that? I mean, this whole sex spell opened the door for so many other things. And I believe we've come full circle to today with the whole Me Too movement. People are revealing how they were sexually assaulted in Hollywood. All a result of what happened at that spell, the casting couch, all the results of what happened with that spell. And what's interesting is that uh, Louise Hubert has a history in Hollywood, which Etienne has researched in depth. Briefly tell us about that. Yeah, she was married to a Hollywood producer named Mentor Hubner, and he wasn't just any old Hollywood producer. He produced and directed over 250 films, many films you would probably be familiar with. Harlem Nights is one of them. Um, Vampire in Brooklyn is another one. But the major one was King Kong. He designed and drew and created the King Kong. And interestingly, in the King Kong movie, you saw him on top of the highest skyscraper in the land. Because I believe that Mentor understood from Luis that the doctrine of high places was very important. One of the things that you have to understand is what a spell really is. If you research in Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, it says that a spell is to slander. It is to bewitch. It is to cast an evil spell. It is to wish injury upon someone. It is to exercise evil power over someone, like putting them under a spell. So the Bible tells us as believers that uh, we are to uh, be sober-minded, to be watchful and vigilant. We are to gird up the loins of our minds, and we are to renew our minds through the washing and the renewing and the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. But what Louise Hubert is talking about when she talks about what she does is altering human consciousness, yes. of placing individuals in a mental state and in a spiritual state where they're incapable of functioning as God had originally intended them to. Yes. Yes. And she utilized sexual energy in the spirit realm to do this. 
And today, many people are operating in this realm knowingly and unknowingly. And I just want uh, you to describe to us briefly exactly what she said when she cast that spell, when she was in the Hollywood Bowl. She said it was very a simple, simple phrase, but we believe in the spoken word. That's very important. It was light the flame, bright the fire, red's the color of desire. Now that may seem like nothing, but there's power in those words. You see, we understand that everything that has come into existence has come into existence through words. You see, the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And the Bible says that out of the abundance of the, of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Yes. And, and, and when somebody is operating in the satanic realm and they are speaking things into existence, they have the power to manifest in the lives of people. Yes. And so what we as believers understand is that we have the supernatural ability and right to break spells. Tell us about breaking spells. Well, um, one of the ways the Lord instructed me with this spell was to have this document burned. And according to Acts 19.19, 19, where Paul burnt the documents, um, if you tuned in yesterday, you know that on the 19th, the spell was burnt, and it, went inside with, with, it, go, it coincides with the Acts 19.19. 19. Not only that, but I believe also applying the blood. The blood cancels out everything, cancels out all documents, cancels out all decrees. And I believe as a result of that, souls are going... God's, God's ultimate goal is to have, win souls. And you couldn't win souls in this city the way you wanted to with that spell lingering the way it is. You know, what's interesting in Galatians 3 and 1, Paul says this, O foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made clear to you as if you had seen a picture of his death on the cross. Paul spoke to the Galatians and he was saying to them that they have lost the understanding of the reality of the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on the cross and that they were under a spell. Yes. Now, what you have to understand is this, is that on the cross, Jesus literally became a curse for us. Yes. The Bible says, cursed is everyone that hangeth from a tree. And because he became a curse for us, through him taking the curses that anyone could speak against you, through his blood and through his resurrection and by his name, we have the authority and the power to break any spell that comes against us. Amen. I want you to speak to believers right now who may be under a curse or a spell and they can't get free and pray right now for them to be delivered and healed and set free and for demons to be exercised from them. Amen. Heavenly Father, right now I just want to reach out to the people that are viewing or who may be viewing later on a later broadcast, especially those who are saved and may be in some backslidden state or some state where they're under a trance or a spell and do not even realize it. I ask you right now, Father, to break that thing right now in the name of Jesus because that spell is broken. I ask you right now, Father, to take your, the precious blood of Jesus right now and place that on their minds and free them and set them free right now. Father, whatever happened in their bloodline, no matter how far back it goes, I break it right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now for setting them free. Let them snap out of it right now because that spell has been broken so they don't have to walk around like that anymore. We thank you right now, Father, they have the freedom of the resurrection of Jesus to live to, and they can look towards the cross. We thank you right now for them being free, free. Break all the things in your bloodline, Father, all molestations, all rapes, sexual assaults, any abortions, Father, anything that's kind of broken their home in the name, adulteries, Father, fornications, Father, all those sexual sins that came as a result. Break them right now for them in the name of Jesus so they can walk free, walk forward, and win their soul back, Father. Win their soul. You, you say in the Bible, Father, you're married to the backslider. You're married to him. So you're not too far where you cannot come back to the Lord. Be free right now in Jesus' name by the spirit of liberty. Now, the Bible says that Satan, that he goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So that means that he is stalking continuously. And that he is not only stalking, but he is the accuser of the brethren. When Satan came against Job, he had to go into the divine court. He had to get permission from God to be able 
to destroy all that was in the life of Job. His cattle, they were burned up. The house collapsed on his children. His body was covered with sores. His wife told him to curse God and die. Messenger after messenger came with grim information about all that he possessed. But Satan was told that he could not take his life, so God limited what the enemy could do in his life. And as long as you and I are in right relationship with Holy Spirit, the power of the enemy in our life is limited. But when you step out the divine boundary of God by involving yourself with Ouija, board, Ouija boards, going to seances, when you involve yourself with astrology, when you involve yourself with occult practices, no matter how you may think they are insignificant, you are opening the door to the realm of darkness. And when that door is open, there's only one way to close it, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ, and through the power of Jesus Christ. Now, Etienne, I want you to explain how you came to the revelation knowledge of how God called you and chose you to close the door over the spell that had been cast on Los Angeles. And this spell was cast in what year? 19, 1968. 50 years ago tomorrow. That would be the anniversary of it. But he gave me a dream some 20 years ago where I saw people walking on top of the earth like they were in a trance, like zombies. And I was watching it from the ground, and I saw they were getting closer to the edge. And as they were, I called out to them and said, turn around, go back, you're going to fall. But they couldn't hear me. And eventually, they fell down to their death. But I could see something in the, in the far distance that was kind of pulling them closer and closer, like they were some, some kind of a trance or a spell. I couldn't see the person. I couldn't see who it was. But I couldn't understand the dream. So for 10 years, I searched and searched for the answer. But in that search, I learned how to interpret dreams and understand dreams. I learned more about witchcraft and things of that nature. So when I found out about this witch and what she did, the Lord gave me the authority to break this spell. I couldn't understand why was I the one watching this and why wouldn't they hear me? Because they were under that spell. Now that the spells are broken, I believe they can be heard. And I want to say one more thing too. People, I want to talk to anybody that has any kind of guilt. See, some sexual sins happen to people as children. Molestations, rape, they had nothing to do with that. That's not your fault. Be free from that right now. Don't let it cause you any emotional pain and problems, because those are memories that you can be carried with. I ask Lord to break those memories off you in the name of Jesus and be free from any kind of guilt. It wasn't your fault, but you can be free today and move forward. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus right now, Glory. we come against the principalities. We come against the powers. We come against the rulers of wickedness and darkness in the spiritual realm. We come against their schemes, their strategies, the wiles and the weapons they have farmed against you. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over all that pertains to you. And right now, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we pray that every foul spirit, every unclean spirit, every spirit of lust, every spirit of murder, every spirit of witchcraft, sorcery, magic, spells, and incantations, every demonic entity that operates in any occult form, every ancestral spirit that operates and has come down through bloodlines, through satanic DNA, every person that is under bondage through spirits that are of lust, spirits that are of confusion, spirits that have caused their sexual identity to become perverted. We speak to you now in the spirit realm, and we command you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth to loose them and to let them go free. If you're listening to us today, no matter what has been done to you, or even what you have done, yes. Jesus Christ can deliver you. Hallelujah. You may be a human trafficker. You may have hundreds of millions of dollars that you have made through the imprisonment and the sale of humans. You may be a person who has been in prostitution for decades, and you feel that it is totally hopeless. You've had multiple abortions, and I see someone in the spirit realm whom I'm speaking to today who've experienced this. You have been beaten, and you feel that now your life is worthless. But let me tell you that the blood of Jesus Christ can deliver you. If you want to know God, speak this out of your mouth. For the Bible declares to us that with the mouth confession on is made unto salvation, and with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Say, Jesus 
come into my life. Forgive me of all of my sexual sins, all of the perversion I've been involved with. Be my Lord and my Savior because I believe you died and you were buried and you rose from the dead. And if you've earnestly prayed that prayer from your heart in sincerity, he has heard your cry and he will come into your life now. God bless you and thank you for being with us.